Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us coming up on Capital City Sunday. I was just basically making that statement, you know, pretty innocuous statement from my standpoint. Senator Ron Johnson continues to maintain there's no reason for people to take offense with comments he made comparing the Trump supporters who stormed the Capitol to Black Lives Matter protesters. There's a lot of money at stake, but more importantly, with the Republicans, it's just, it's time to do the right thing. Once again, there's the question of whether state Republicans will accept federal money to expand Medicaid. Democrats say there's no reason to oppose spending less to cover more people. This morning, we will take a dive into the state budget and hear from two members of the Joint Finance Committee that is in the early stages of rewriting the governor's budget. First, though, we begin with our senior senator in Washington. Ron Johnson, more than a week ago, gained national attention for saying he would have been more concerned for his safety had the crowd at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th been Black Lives Matter demonstrators. We had a few minutes this week to ask Senator Johnson about that. You believe that these comments that you made, uh, saying that you wouldn't have been concerned uh, by the, the folks who were there at the Capitol on January 6th, but you would have been more concerned if it had been a Black Lives Matter protest. Do you believe that um, some folks have taken those initial remarks out of context? Uh, what are they missing? It depends on what context you're talking about. I, I was talking about, and I was comparing the, the level of violence, uh, the totality of the riots that occurred during the summer by left-wing groups, uh, where you had, according to one report in September, about uh, 570 of the, again, 7,700 peaceful protests of that subset, about 570 turned violent, uh, about one to one, one to two trillion dollars worth of damage, uh, up to 25 people lost their lives, 700 law enforcement officials uh, were injured. Uh, and I was just basically making that statement, you know, pretty innocuous statement from my standpoint. But if what you're saying is, think about all the folks on January 6th who weren't there to riot, I don't recall you making that same statement about those folks in the summer. You know, I was in the middle of those, those protests that turned riots in Madison and Kenosha. I was in the middle of that, and we called that for what it was. We called it when it turned into a riot, and the vast majority of those folks did not, did not turn violent. You, you might have called that, but, you know, so many Democrat leaders continue to say that those were peaceful protests. And by the way, most of them were. I acknowledge that. Uh, and most of the people that, that protested did so peacefully. There's a small subset, but in 570 instances, a small subset created an awful lot of uh, destruction and damage. 570 times those turned into riots versus the Trump rallies were all peaceful. Trump rallies, I mean, the political rallies, which I attended, and, and my comments were, I'm pushing back against the narrative that there were thousands of armed insurrectionists intent on overthrowing the government. I don't think that's an accurate description of what's happening. And, and, and then also, and, 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 oh, there's, also, there's, also there's, also, there's also an attempt to paint with a very broad brush that uh, however many Trump uh, supporters were there, that they were all armed insurrectionists, and, and they weren't. By and large, they were people that respect law enforcement. They would never even think of rioting or breaking the law. And I, that's just the point I've been trying to make. I've been trying to push back on the broad brush that 74 million Americans are somehow suspected domestic terrorists or potential armed insurrectionists when that's just not the Senator, truth. Who has said that every Trump voter is an armed insurrectionist? What, what, what they have said is there were thousands of armed insurrectionists and I don't believe there were. 800 people breached the Capitol. I have condemned that. I have condemned the violence. I have condemned the racial slurs. We're continuing our conversation with UW System President and former Wisconsin Governor Tommy Thompson. President Thompson, let's talk football. Yeah. As far as what you were able to gather in discussions with Chancellor Blank and the Big Ten Conference, what changed from August 11th when the Big Ten said they were postponing fall sports to this week when they decide we're going to have fall football after all? Well, number one, the, the faster testing. You know, they changed their ideas about uh, PCR testing to an antigen testing, which we're doing at the campuses. You can test the, the athletes faster and, and be able to have a determination much sooner uh, than what was before. Number two, uh, there was a, the feeling that we could do it safely. And, you know, with the testing, and we felt that the athletes were, were there. Three, they were able to control the, the, the duration of the season down to nine weeks. 
and they were not going to have spectators. All of these things went into it, plus it's an ongoing thing. Nobody knows for sure about this COVID-19. It's a terrible virus, and they've been studying this. The Big Ten has. They've had lots of meetings, and they came to the right conclusion, I believe. Play football, have a smaller, uh, smaller season, and later in the year, and more testing. I think they, they've done, they, they, they made the right decision, and I think they're going to do it well. You said testing's the big change. It is. Why should such quality, rapid testing be available for football, but nobody else on campus? But it is. It's the same test we're using. And, and all, it's not on Madison, but it's in all the other campuses. Every day, if they want a rapid test every they day, can, they can it, do it. That's the Anderson test. That's what we have. That's the test we put out in all the other campuses. It's, it's not what Madison uses, but Madison is also now starting to go to a faster test as well, the antigen test. Will, will it be close to a point where people can get a, a test every day in Madison outside of the football staff if they I, want it? I think that's uh, more, more than likely, yes. You're watching Capital City Sunday. Later on this year, state lawmakers are set to redraw the maps of the state's districts for both Congress and the legislature. This process can create some strange looking districts. Just looking at the assembly, some parts of the 7th in and around Milwaukee cut into a single block and take some houses while leaving others. The 41st swings out to take in rip and then swoops down to get Wisconsin Dells. And the 70th goes in and out of Stevens Point. Critics say it's a clear gerrymander meant to give Republicans an edge. They point to the 2018 governor's race where Tony Evers won by one percentage point, yet Scott Walker carried 63 of the 99 assembly districts. Democrats introduced a bill this week that would give map making duties to the nonpartisan legislative reference bureau. A Republican leaders say truly even maps are impossible because liberal voters are so heavily clustered in urban areas. Joining us this morning to talk about the latest push to end the practice of lawmakers drawing legislative districts are Rick Essenberg, president of the Conservative Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, and Democratic Senator Jeff Smith from Eau Claire, a co-author of this latest bill trying to bring nonpartisan redistricting to Wisconsin. The public health officials in your district and all over the state are saying masks work, so why not stand with the governor and, and publicly advocate and say this is what everybody should be doing? I mean. I'm not a, a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I think you can also look at some facts that say the masks really haven't been changing anything. But again, that's not the point here. The point is we have a but governor who's Senator, that's, that's not what your own public health people are saying. Your own public health officials, Washington, Ozaukee County, Fond du Lac County, they're telling the public wear masks. It does help. And that's fine. And I have no problem with people wearing masks. I wear a mask on occasion when I feel it's appropriate. But what we're talking about is an executive order. We're talking about a process that the governor isn't following. You know, when it comes to legislating this type of thing, there's only so much the government can do. You know, I'd imagine that ultimately it's a cultural issue that as Americans and as a society, um, there has to be people whose hearts and minds change. And, you know, this, this goes across cultures too. What is it in your view that can allow segments of society to appreciate Asian culture, the food, the clothes, the history, but at the same time still be leery of Asian people? Mm. Well, I think that um, we see that, you know, so often, right? Because um, like cultural appreciation, right, is not the person. You can enjoy eating Chinese food, right? But not have a respect for the, the person who made the food for you, right? And I think that disconnect is, is part of the tragedy, right? If that disconnect is, um, is you know something that I think what you're saying we have to really rethink, right? Is that um, these kinds of practices are related to a group of people, and I think that um, in addition to it's not so much just awareness that we have to think about. We have to really rethink how we um, the policies that we have in society to push us forward to get rid of you know racist sentiments. Professor Chang, appreciate your time. There's so much more I'd like to discuss with you, but we just don't have the time for it this morning. So I'll, I'll leave it here for now. Thank you so much for your time, Professor. Thank you. Next week, we will take a close look at the upcoming election for state superintendent. We are set to have an extended joint conversation with both candidates. Until then, stay safe.